It's six o'clock on Friday, the 24th of June. You're listening to a special edition of Good Morning Ulster on this referendum day with Connor Bradford and Karen Patterson. Good morning. The news this morning is that the United Kingdom has voted to leave the European Union. Let's get rid of the flag, the anthem, Brussels and all that has gone wrong. <laughs> Let June the 23rd go down in our history as our Independence Day. Northern Ireland voted to remain. Sinn Féin has called for a border referendum. The DUP, Sammy Wilson, has called on the Prime Minister to resign. It is an historic morning. We'll bring you all the reaction and analysis over the next three hours. But first, a new summary. Karen, good morning. The UK is in course to leave the European Union in a sensational snub to the political establishment. With results from 96% of counting stations now declared, those who want to leave are ahead by more than one million votes. Voters in Northern Ireland had voted to stay in the EU. We're joined by Dr Lee McGowan from Queen's University, an advisor to Stormont on the European Union. We also have two voices on either side of the referendum. Adrian Houston wanted the UK to leave the EU. Glyn Roberts is the vice chair of the campaign group Northern Ireland Stronger in Europe. John Campbell, our business and economics editor, is here. And uh, Mark Devonport, our political editor, well, he's hot-footing it uh, to the studio here from one of the current centres <laughs> overnight. <locations>. Indeed, <laughs> lots of questions, of course, being raised on a national level too. Of course, Northern Ireland in a special position, the only land border with the EU. Mark, much in demand uh, this morning to see how that story unfolds. And as I say, he will be with us uh, very shortly. But first, let's go to Adrian Houston. Uh, Adrian, you were very keen to support the Leave campaign. It is though a Pyrrhic victory, isn't it? Because while you supported Leave, the UK has voted overall to leave. Northern Ireland has voted to remain. Well, it has, but it's a national uh, campaign, Karen, and so the national result is what counts. Um, because we have our land border with the EU, there were obviously particular concerns in Northern Ireland, and uh, I think most of them uh, aren't necessarily as significant as they were made out. But it did mean that the vote uh, did not go our way here, but that doesn't matter because it's a national matter, and I think Northern Ireland will be the better for this change. The markets, though, are in free fall. We are entering a period of grave economic uncertainty. 3,000 people travel back and forth across the border every day. How would you reassure them that the overall UK vote is good for Northern Ireland? Uh, well, firstly, I don't think the, the people, the 22,000 who travel across the border, will have anything to worry about. And the, the Irish ambassador, uh, Dan, uh, Dan Mulhall, uh, said that, that he would be honouring the common travel uh, agreement if we did leave to, uh, vote to leave. Uh, in terms of the markets, um, I think that there, there may be a, a certain amount of correction needed because they called it wrong. The big banks, the, uh, the traders, the currency traders, they all decided in the, in the last few days of this campaign that Remain was winning. And they made all their deals and their forward transactions on that basis. And they were wrong. And because they were wrong, uh, they, 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 everything g goes a wee bit uncertain for a while and, and, and various corrections have to take place. I think over the next uh, couple of weeks we will th see things starting to settle down. And uh, now that... Uh, the government, uh, headed by whoever, now that the government knows it has to proceed towards an orderly withdrawal from the EU, uh, we're going to find that the government will suddenly discover that it is possible to settle down and start negotiating the things that we need to do. OK, Glyn Roberts, you're the, the vice chair of the campaign group Northern Ireland Stronger in Europe. Northern Ireland does believe we're stronger in Europe, but the rest of the UK doesn't this morning. Wales doesn't. Well, I think that we wake up to a very divided nation across the UK um, and I think that in very much in Northern Ireland terms we won the battle but we lost the war and you know it is gratifying to see that Northern Ireland one of the highest in votes across the UK I think in terms of the in campaign in Northern Ireland we fought a very positive campaign and I think that was well received on the doorstep and by the, and by the voters. Well received but the voters did not support your campaign perhaps to the levels you might have hoped. Well, I, I think that, yes, there's various things that we need to look at in terms of turnout in various constituencies, but ultimately the 56 57%, uh, that was what we thought we would get. Um, obviously, in the rest of the UK and England and Wales in particular, um, it didn't work out that way. Um, but I think what we now need to focus on is not triumphalism, uh, is not point scoring, but we need to see leadership uh, from our, our national 
politicians and the Prime Minister and obviously as well starting the negotiations with Brussels about where we go from here because you, there is a lot of concern, not just in the business community but from uh, the wider public here, where on earth do we go from now on in? Uh, this is a completely new start. People did not expect this to happen. There is shock and I think the shock has not, has not fully sunk in. So I think we need to focus, how do we move forward? What is the future now? And I think that's what we need to be focusing, not what we did right or did wrong in the campaign, but what is the future now? And I think that's where we need to be and we need to start sitting down uh, straight away and thinking, where do we, on earth, do we go from here? Um, Adrian Houston, I mean, obviously you're pleased with the result to leave um, and there you have Sammy Wilson saying he thinks David Cameron should go. But, I mean, if you start changing the government now at this stage, I mean, this sort of uncertainty could sort of go into spades, couldn't it? It could really rock the boat. Well, I, I, I guess it could and it will be very interesting to see how uh, Cameron's future uh, pans out over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but I, I don't think, uh, e even if we did have a change of Prime Minister, I don't think... Uh, we need to get unnecessarily uh, excited about that because we can be fairly sure it will be someone that we already know and, and who probably has cabinet experience. Um, uh, so we'll, uh, we, we'll just have to wait and see on that front. But I, I don't think we're going to see any great disruption in the cabinet and we can uh, just hope that uh, now that he's got the vote, David Cameron will know that it is now his job or his successors, his job to make sure that this works. And that can involve... Uh, his relations with the EU, it can involve perhaps maybe some reshuffling of his cabinet, but at the end of the day, now that the people have spoken, he has to sort it out. Mm. And after a, a couple of hours of reflection, he will just get down to doing the work that they will already have done in the background of knowing, well, what if the British people vote to leave? The irony being, of course, he didn't have to call this referendum in the first place. Well, he I, must rue the day, I would have thought. I would think he absolutely does. I think he, he, called, he called it wrong on the side that he supported. And I think the lesson for David Cameron is trust your heart, trust your gut reaction. David Cameron is not a great fan of Europe. And I think uh, he, he backed the horse that really, in his heart, he didn't think he should back, but he thought he was going to defeat UK. And all the time so. remembering that 56% of the population in Northern Ireland thought his position was right. Anyway, for the time being, gentlemen, Sorry. thank you very much. Indeed. I was just wondering, Adrian, um, what do you think the executive should define as its priorities in terms of any negotiation around trade? I, I think the executive should certainly support any little concessions we can get uh, with uh, trade across the border with Ireland because obviously we do have the unique position of the land border. And, but the uh, difficulty so there is that, that, that. that trade is an EU competency so we can't negotiate a bilateral with, with, with the Republic. That's, that's yes, a a, a, absolutely. I mean, I think, I think there's a massive obstacle there and it'll be uncharted waters, I would imagine, if, if the EU were to allow Ireland to have a slightly different arrangement from the rest of Europe. However, I would take the general view that I think uh, when this is all worked out, we will end up with, a, with another free trade area with the EU because they need us. They sell us more stuff than we, than, than we sell to them, okay. so they won't want to Ireland. Hold that thought for us. Uh, the time here on this special edition of Good Morning Ulster has just gone 6.32. Let's have a new... Just finally, Minister, uh, the, there is real speculation this morning that uh, David Cameron may announce his resignation. What would be your reaction if that were to uh, develop? Well, of course, that's a matter for him. He has to take into consideration uh, how he feels after this whole matter. He put himself very front and centre. First uh, Minister, we must cut away. Uh, David Cameron is approaching the lecture there immediately out yeah. of Street. He's just taken part in a giant democratic exercise, perhaps the biggest in our history. Over 33 million people from England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland and Gibraltar have all had their say. We should be proud of the fact that in these islands we trust the people with these big decisions. We not only have a parliamentary democracy, but on questions about the arrangements for how we're governed, there are times when it is right to ask the people themselves, and that is what we have done. The British people have voted to leave the European Union, and their will must be respected. I want to thank everyone who took part in the campaign on my side of the argument, including all those who put, put aside party differences to speak in what they believed was the national interest. And let me congratulate all those who took part in the Leave campaign for the spirited and passionate case that they made. 
The will of the British people is an instruction that must be delivered. But the British people have made a very clear decision to take a different path. And as such, I think the country requires fresh leadership to take it in this direction. I will do everything I can as Prime Minister to steady the ship over the coming weeks and months. But I do not think it would be right for me to try to be the captain that steers our country to its next destination. Thank you. Back in the studio now. Let's have a word with Adrian Houston, who was uh, backing the Leave campaign, so he's pleased about that. You're also actually a member of the Conservative Party, Adrian. Um, it's all up for grabs now, isn't it, as far as number 10 is concerned? It is, absolutely, Connor. And uh, I already had my tickets booked for Conservative Conference in October, so uh, it looks like we will be going there to see the new leader in place. Would you be a uh, Johnson man? Um, I would be happy with Johnson, yes. Johnson, Gove, um, even Theresa May maybe, but I don't think she's necessarily a particularly good people person. Um, but I think Johnson would be good. He's a very clever guy. He's got a great buffoon of an act, but he is a very clever guy. And to be quite honest, a few years down the line, we should be seeing Ruth Davidson coming in as the leader, though she did lead the, re the Remain campaign uh, debate. So... Maybe not yet. Obviously, Boris Johnson, Nigel Farage, all the Leave campaign over the moon about all this. For, for, for those who are against and for even neutral people, it, it, all this uncertainty and worry, which we, anxiety levels are high right across the board. We've talked about economy, politics, the border. This is a worrying time. Well, it is, and, and, and John Campbell has actually shared in the, in the studio here a graph of the FTSE 250 showing it's already bouncing back. So, you know, the unset un, 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 unsettled nature of markets does settle down fairly quickly. Uh, but, uh, yes, it, it has been a worrying time because people have been given so much stuff that they really can't comprehend so many numbers and scenarios, and there's, there's obviously the uncertainty about the future leaving the EU. But the, we've got plenty of time to sort it out. Uh, Cameron's going in three months' time, and after that, sometime after that, we then have two years, and we can, we, it, it'll, all get, it'll all work out. Adrian, thanks very much indeed. Thank you so much, and thank you for your company on the morning that uh, the UK voted <laughs> to leave the EU. David Cameron resigned, and we're expecting to hear from Boris Johnson very, very shortly. Yeah, let's hope Thomas has changed his sterling into euros, because it's plunging down. Very good morning to you all. On 92 to 95 FM and 1341 medium wave. This is BBC Radio Ulster. It's nine o'clock and with the BBC News, this is Keith Burnside. David Cameron says he'll step down as Prime Minister after the UK voted to leave the EU. 